Hello, everybody. Welcome in. It is Sunday, and that is Patreon Q&A time. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thank you all for coming. Hope everybody's doing fantastic. And thank you to the mods in the chat and everybody for being here. This is an interesting Q&A today because <laughs> things are really heating up out there in the world. And not only in the world, but also in the crypto sphere too. So let's jump in and go through all of the stuff. We'll be talking about pair trading, macro trading, commodity trading, crypto, uh, Tesla, the future of financial services, and a whole bunch more. So let's just jump in. All right, now let me let me find where are my there you are. Yeah, got it. All right, and of course, as I go through this, everything is just edutainment. Just a guy on the internet, and I want to shout out to everybody on Patreon to make all a lot of this possible. And this is from Badger Eleven, I can buy a share of James's and Team's knowledge for nine dollars a month. Ridiculous value. Thank you, Badger, for saying that about our Patreon group. Yes. Number one <laughs> source of alpha, I think, anywhere. And it's been it's been a very good year as well. So let's talk about Bitcoin real quick. Bitcoin is trending. Uh, I just want to deviate from the norm before I jump into questions. Everybody is buzzing about Bitcoin. Literally, just over the past two weeks, it's gone insane. Mainstream media, traditional finance rags, friends and family. Everybody is buzzing. That's a very good thing for the space. I also see it here in the views. Views have doubled literally doubled in the last two weeks. So you can see this Google Trend stuff actually works. And the other thing I want to remind people, and it's kind of a bit of reality, but I get this question all the time. And also a lot of people are saying things right now that, oh, the bull market has just begun. No, the bull market begins literally a year after the bear market starts, which would have taken us back to middle of November timeframe, but it definitely started in earnest on the 17th of January, 2023, which is nearly 11 months ago. So 10 months ago or so. But the key thing re really, and as everybody says, hey, hey, Mr. Weston, as everybody says, oh, the bull market's beginning. Well, no, if you're buying Bitcoin at 15,500 and selling it at 100,000, that gives you an ROI of 545%. But if you're late to the party and you buy at 35,000 and you sell at 100,000, your ROI is only 187%. That's just the importance I keep stressing of getting in early, getting in hard and seeing exactly how things work. Thank you, Mr. Mike. Appreciate you. All right. Very first question. Straight into it. Tesla GBTC ratio. And uh, they put me on the spot. Adobe 33. The Tesla GBTC ratio is starting to look attractive. However, I am torn. What are your thoughts on converting some GBTC to Tesla, given the multiple upside of a looming ETF? Might I miss out on a big GBTC move? And what looks to be the faster horse between now and the halving? So, as usual, I'm going to put my on the line and give my price predictions for April 14th, 2024, which I believe is the date of the halving. And again, I've modeled this many, many different ways using charts and analytics and trends and models and everything else. So I'm interested to see how exactly this will work. And we're pretty much like 20 weeks away. These are my targets. And first of all, every asset has a price. Uh, I've always said all year, my target for the halving was between 35K and 42K. We are at 35K already, and we're nearly five, six months away from the halving. So that's nuts. So we're, things are moving much faster than previous cycles. But these are some of the things I would like to share with you to answer your question. First of all, if you take the price right now, and by the way, uh, I ran this model last night, the price is 34,078. Now it's 34,700. So it's gone up a little bit, but that's a small potato. But here, actually I should have refreshed it because it is tied directly to a Google sheet that has all the data live. Anyhow, leaving that aside, my target now has gone from 35K up to the higher end of 42K by April 14th, 2024. That is an ROI of 23% from where we are today. And if you invested $10,000 in Bitcoin today, you'd have 12,324 by April. Now, Tesla is trading at $207.30. Uh, my target uh, for April 14th is 350 bucks. Okay, it was 300, now it's 350 because they're going to have so many tailwinds. And I know people are crying from the rooftop saying, oh, they're not able to sell their cars and there's so much FUD because Elon is probably the most hated man on earth. 
embrace the FUD because it's delicious, because it enables us to buy an asset that should be priced at $350 to $600 for only $207. So I, you know, a lot of people get sad when they see price go down. I actually get happy because you get a chance to stack. But the ROI, if we do hit that target of 350, will be 68.84%. And 10,000 will be worth 16,883. Now, GBTC is a little bit different, all right? Because I do also expect the spot ETF to be approved, which means the GBTC discount of about 15% right now will go to zero. Therefore, if the discount goes to zero, GBTC should be trading at $29.15. It's currently trading at $25.07. And mapping that to my target of 42,000 Bitcoin, that would make the price of GBTC $35.93. And that is an ROI of 43.31%. So from these three assets, literally, if I'm right, and I could be completely wrong, any of these assets could go to zero. Okay, that's just the reality. But if I'm right, Tesla is the best bet. GBTC is the second best bet. And Bitcoin is the third best bet. And again, Bitcoin could go to 100 grand in the next three months, four months, depending on how much money flows in and when the spot ETF is approved. Things will be bonkers in 2024, 2025. As I've been saying all year as well, I sound like a broken record. It's an exciting time to be alive. Let's look at some more models as well to back up kind of what I'm talking about. Let's look at the pair trade. This is Bitcoin divided by Tesla. And you can see here very clearly how the results actually show up. You have a pair that typically bounces off about 100 and goes up to about 160, 180. The, when it's at the bottom level, that is the, you got 100 shares for every Bitcoin. That's typically a time to buy. You buy your Bitcoin. And then when it goes up to about 164, 180, 175 shares, whatever it is of Tesla per Bitcoin, you flip back. And we spend literally half the time above that red line in the middle, the 200-day moving average, and half the time below. When we're far above it, and things always mean revert, it's typically a good time. Now, that being said, a model is a model. The model cannot anticipate how much money will come into Bitcoin. We know Bitcoin is ultimately hard and extremely scarce. Long-term holders are not selling to see a very, very high price. Therefore, things could go crazy. This could go out the window because this time is different. But let's look at the mean reversion real quick. We're overlaying the mean reversion onto the IDSS model. And again, that also confirms we are at that sell level. We are very overbought for this pair. So putting all those things, I think, based on the data, based on the multiple models, based on my price targets, I do believe between now and April 14th, Tesla could be the faster horse. But we'll see. Something could happen to Elon. Uh, something could happen to the company. Literally, World War III could happen. The economy could crash entirely. Who knows? So, hope that helps. Next question is from Lloyd. Would you buy call options on Bitcoin ETH now? And if so, at what strike price? And how far ahead? E.g. on Deribit. So, let's jump in. And there's a reason. Like, I'm an options trader. Why have I never bought an option on Deribit or any of these other places? Let me explain why. Here we are. These are the live, and I have an account. Uh, I don't use it though. But uh, if you look at all the options for Bitcoin, right now, you can see we only go out to 27th of September, 2024, which isn't very long. It's like nine, nine months away. And if I'm buying an option, I like to buy a long-term option. That means 12 months plus. And I like to sell short term against it. That's my model. That's what I do. I also like to buy half intrinsic value, half time value. And that would place me somewhere around that. Let's see, I just fast forward to exactly where it is. This is the actual option. Now, the bid is on the left, $10,105. I think this actual option is for the $30,000 can't really see it here, but it's for the, I think it's the $30,000 strike uh, on Bitcoin, which is basically half intrinsic, half time value. Now, if you look at the spread, <laughs> this is a Brighton Astohola, which is an insane spread, everybody. And we have our chef here who understands German. That's for you, buddy. But you can see the bid and ask delta is over $3,000. That's a 30.69% spread. You can't make this stuff up. Deribit is making bank off the backs of retail investors. 
That is absolutely ridiculous. So if you're buying that option, you're paying way over what it should be priced at. And if you're selling, you're going to get nothing for it. And that makes it impossible to trade these things profitably. Not impossible, but there are times when you would do this. It's like Bitcoin at 15500 Then you buy at the money or even out of the money options. But you got to make sure you have enough time. So if you did that 10 months ago, you'd be fine. But that's why you got 10 months. And I like to buy at least a year. Now let's compare this to what I do trade for options. And in answer to your question, this is the MicroStrategy option spread. The spread is 2.93% versus <laughs> over 30% on the Deribit options. And here you're way better off. Look at the bid ask, $218.15 versus $224. And uh, that is a $6 delta on a 200 plus <laughs> premium. And that's only a 2.93% spread. So therefore, play the proxy. And that's why even though many could argue MicroStrategy is more risky, I think the options are way, way better financial sense. Hope that helps. Next question from Greg M. What about TRB, Tellor? It went from $15 on September 1st to $115 on October 25th. Well, this is exciting. So... As you know, we analyze all the top 500 cryptos in our compendium, and Teller is number two out of all oracles and data management platforms. Uh, it is a decentralized platform. It has reliable, secure data feeds. It's got some pretty okay partners, except for one, which I think is a bit dodgy. Uh, they are kind of trying to find a way to completely redo the way Oracle oracles work, but they're also partnered with the firms like the likes of Chainlink, which is also a competitor. And we've seen as well, because the world is moving to real world assets, things like oracles are gonna become very, very popular, but it's become a very crowded space very quickly. We now have nearly 15 or 16 oracles in our compendium right now. Now there's a few interesting things to note about this one. First of all, if we look at the ATR model, there's a new one coming out this week to people that have the suite um, fingers crossed. Uh, part of what I was doing this week uh, on the road was working with the team to get this finished. Um, now the Rika score is 0.78. It's extremely good, but it's at the higher end of the range. So the ATR model, uh, we call it the augmented trading range. It's designed to tell you if something is dead or alive, or it's overheated, or it's a good value, etc. And I believe at 120, it's overbought. But I think an entry at about 60 could be worth it. So not only are the, is the compendium score very strong, second best of all data management platforms of all. And by the way, Chainlink is not number one. Um, but also, when you look at this relative value, as an investor, you need to always look at this. Again, from the compendium, you can see here the couple of things to note. The fully due to market cap over market cap is 1.03 for Teller versus 1.8 for Chainlink. That's not good. And second of all, the market cap dominance is 0.02% for Teller. TRB is a ticker and half of 1% for Chainlink. So the market cap uh, of Chainlink is 2,400% larger than Teller. So is Chainlink 2,400% better than Teller? I don't know. I haven't done a deep dive yet. But just looking at the chart, looking at the compendium scores, looking at some basic metrics, it looks pretty good. So that could be worth a deep dive. Let me know if anybody's interested. But again, it has taken a huge run. And uh, you're right there like we were down at under 10 bucks not too long ago. And I shot to nearly 160. So it's been insane. It's like a big smiley face. So don't chase as well. When you see things doing this type of move, it's never good to chase. And a lot of people as well, just a quick warning to those in crypto, a lot of people get alerted to things that have had a huge day or a huge week and they follow, they FOMO in. Don't ever do that. That's why I always say don't chase, replace. Find something that hasn't popped yet. And this is what this is designed to help do. So not bad. Teller gets a thumbs up for me so far, just in these very basic uh, fundamentals here. Next question from Marco Mark. Tesla has the third largest holdings of Bitcoin in a publicly traded company. Even after selling 75% of its Bitcoin holding prior, would this be considered another bonus for Tesla stock? And do you see Elon doing with Bitcoin in the future in relationship to Tesla? So a whole bunch to unpack here. First of all, they sold 90%, not 
90%, but they have the average price uh, that they paid for it is about 18,000. So they had now have more than 100% profit on their actual investment, which is great for Tesla. Let's compare the data that you mentioned. Yes, they are number three on public holder list of Bitcoin. MicroStrategy is number one. Marathon Digital Holdings is number two. By the way, that's also the most shorted miner. Rightfully so. It never does well in my analysis. And number three, Tesla. But the most important thing to look at here, and you see all the other names there, you got BitFarms and BitDigital, a lot of miners, CleanSpark, Hive, Riot, The Block, which is formerly Square, Galaxy, Coinbase even have a bag as well. But the most important thing to look at is this ratio here. This is the Bitcoin as a percentage of their market cap. And for Tesla, it's only 0.05% of the market cap. So as I would say, it is a complete nothing burger right now. So. It, Bitcoin, if it goes to a million dollars or $10 million, it will do nothing to the price of Tesla. So don't bank on that at all. Now, if you have more than 35 to 50% Bitcoin holdings on your balance sheet based on market cap, that's enough to move the needle in a big way. Now, let's talk about the point that you're trying to get to. How could Bitcoin influence Tesla, etc.? Well, Elon Musk is famous for one thing. He is an advocate, of course, for synergy across companies. You know, he does sustainable energy and electric vehicles and energy storage and solar. He also builds tunnels. Why would he do that? Well, to save energy. Also, he believes, you know, all his companies, whether it's Neuralnet, Starlink, etc., you got Cybertrucks going around in Baja with Starlink antennas on the roof. So real-time internet access all the time. But he likes his companies to work together to achieve common goals. And this can lead to greater innovation and efficiency. And this brings me to X. So 21 years ago, he had a vision for X that became PayPal. And it's all coming together. And he now has an ambitious vision for X, the formerly known Twitter, to become here. Something that will replace your bank before year end 2024. And his words recently were, you won't need a bank account. It will blow my mind if we don't have that rolled out by the end of next year. So both Elon Musk and CEO of Twitter now, Linda Yaccarino, see 2024 as the year that will materialize. That's when they'll fulfill the original vision. And that will be underpinned by some type of crypto, whether it's Bitcoin or, heaven forbid, Doge or who knows what. But that'll be part of it as well as we go forward. So watch that space. And then once this is live, who knows, maybe you can tweet something to order a Tesla car or a solar panel or storage device or whatever else. That's what's going to be exciting. And remember, in today's world, the pace of disruption is rapid. Okay. It no longer takes 10 years to disrupt anything. It takes six to nine months. So when he says 2024 will be revolutionary for this, watch this space. I'm bullish on Twitter. Uh, next is from Walkachu. Do you see a point down the road where Tesla would pay a shareholder dividend and what factors would cause this? So, as you know, I do not like dividend paying companies. Let me explain why. A couple of reasons. First of all, disruption does not pay dividends because they should technically have a long list of things that they invest in. They have to reinvest for growth and to achieve higher returns. And for me, a company that pays dividends, they don't know what to do with their money. They got nowhere else to do it but give it back to shareholders, which I think is silly. You want them to be good capital allocators, and that's why you buy their stock. And disruption should always have R&D and innovation focus, not dividend focus. Also, dividend commitments can hamstring the company, especially if it's a rough economic period like we're going through right now. Um, they could be stuck in terms of, oh, should I build a Giga Mexico or pay dividends? What to do? What to do? Crazy. Also, the focus is sustainable future, not dividend payments. And they'll continue to find things to invest in. And therefore, you buy, you buy stock in companies like Tesla because of what they are going to deliver. They're going to deliver robots with a brain. They're going to deliver cars that drive themselves. They're going to become the biggest, they're already the biggest energy storage company in the world. Um, and so much more. And that's why you buy Tesla. You play where the puck is going to be, not where it is based on the quarterly statement right now. 
And that's why it's magical and has been magical for many years. Next question is from Toronto Blue. I'm looking into setting up my trading accounts for both hodling and active trading. I have a tax-free savings account and a margin account in Canada. I'm thinking of using IDSS for trading. What do you think it's better to trade and hold in the TFSA accounts or the margin account with IDSS? Well, this is this type of question has a lot of sub questions like what your goals are, etc. But the way I kind of look at it is it really depends on your style and your goals and those types of factors, how long you're going to invest for, how experienced you are. So if you are a long-term investor who plans to hold your investments for several years or more, then the TFSA is a good option and you will benefit from the tax growth of your capital gains and dividends. But if you're an active trader who plans to trade frequently, then the margin account is the better option and you will have access to more advanced trading tools and features and you'll be able to amplify your gains faster. So the simple way to put this is, with a simple chart, imagine you are very young, you're in your late 20s, and you got 40 years to invest, and you have everything you need right now, and you've got a good paying job, and you're in no rush to retire early or anything like that, then just go with the TFSA uh, tax-free account. And if, however, you have, say, 10 years left or 15 years left, you are late to building your bag, then you need to go... Uh, you're, it's a race against the clock. You need all the tools you can. You need all the margin you can to really amplify your bags. And I wouldn't be where I am without options and margin. They, uh, they, <laughs> it's it's very difficult just uh, trading equities going forward. You can do it, but you need time, much more time. So you can grow things much faster with special tools. That's kind of the simple answer. Hope that helps. Next one is from Duncan One. By previously not having a great trading plan. I accumulated a number of other coins over the past few years. Any NFA thoughts as to managing legacy coins, all still going up quite well in value over the last week. Flipping to Bitcoin, how best to monitor that for this bull run? Well, if you know the channel and Patreon, you know my allocations and how I swap between assets and how I try to keep very strict allocations and how I try to identify assets that are cheap. But it's so funny, there are many people in the community still that have all these legacy tokens from the last bull run and the one previous to that, and many of them are dead and they're hoping that they're going to spring back to life and some will, but there's always going to be a faster horse and there's always going to be that big black hole that sucks everything in. And that's why I say focus on being in the top 1%. And I don't care if it's Bitcoin or anything else, but just hope is not a strategy when it comes to holding these doggy old coins. There's two things uh, we have. First of all, this thing again that's coming. Uh, ATR is designed to identify things that are dead. And this is, and no offense to anybody in ICP, but I have this other indicator, which is a little bit informal. When people spam the YouTube comments with things like ICP is going to take over the world, ICP is going to crush Solana, ICP is going to do this, ICP is going to be bigger than Bitcoin, and it's just incessant, that means the pumpers are pumping it. That means it's actually inherently not good. And this has worked flawlessly for years. So when something is pumped heavily or sold heavily or marketed heavily, the product is not good. It's just simple. It's been my experience the entire life. This is ICP and the ATR, and it really couldn't be more dead. Yeah, it may pop, but you can see with the heights, the purple line is where it was and how it's come down over time. All right. This is not... Um, not something that will probably do well in the future. So be careful with things like that. And again, this is my <laughs> the anecdotal evidence of the amount something is pumped. And it's annoying because we've got to block and report all those pumpers of this ICP thing so people don't get tricked into thinking it is the next big thing because it hasn't been and has lost everybody a ton of money. The other thing as well to look at, very important, another simple metric from the compendium. Very simple. There is zero volume pretty much on ICP, which means zero demand. The 24 hour volume divided by market cap is 0 0.01, which is like of all the assets out there, extremely, extremely low. So when there's no volume, there's no demand, there's no interest, price can't go up. And the pumpers have been trying to pump this for the longest time. And there you go. So just beware, be in the 1%. Hope is not a strategy. 
look at all your stuff, compare it to the winners, look at the performance of pairs to other kind of blue chip assets and make your decision from there. And be in the right narratives. The narratives are things like now oracles are red hot with real world asset. AI is red hot. Layer one's red hot too. And some layer twos too. So that's kind of the big message. Everything else, be careful. Be careful of also the gaming plays. Uh, some of the gaming plays might actually be good, but the tokenomics suck. And there are some layer ones that are actually good, but the tokenomics suck. So that will just prevent things from going up. So sorry to come out with that hard lesson. <laughs> Duncan, I think it was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just clear shop. And, and and what I do at the end of every year is clear shop. I, I force myself to empty my shelves and start afresh. And that discipline, every time I come back six months later into the new year, like it'll be summer 2024, and I'll say, I'm so glad I got rid of all that crap because either things run, you milk them for what they're worth, and you ditch them and you move on to faster horse. Think of that as your discipline. Very, very important. Next question from Robert G. Uh, do these sentences say the same thing as find your rhythm? Find your personal protocol and develop your personal routines and systems for pursuing your trading goals. So, um, sort of. So, for those that may not know, I talk about people. It's critical to be able to find your rhythm in whatever you do in life. If it's a job, make sure it's something that you like and enjoy. You wake up every morning and you're excited to go to work. If you're not excited to go to work, there's a problem. And you need to change that to be happy, okay? But finding your rhythm for me uh, has a couple of different uh, meanings. And I use it for investing. So it means basically develop your personal trading routine. So whatever, whether that might be getting up at 5.30 a.m., researching, being there when the market's open at 6.30 a.m. if you're on the West Coast, trading for an hour, and then going off and riding your bike for six hours, that could be your personal routine. Uh, I have a very regimented one myself. I do the same thing pretty much every day. Second, find your personal favorite system. You need a system. You need a process, a method to help you. And you have to like it. You have to understand it and embrace it. And we'll actually talk about one as well that few understand. But those that do, nail it. Then you need to create a personalized trading plan. What is it you like to do? What tools do you like to use? Are you a swing trader? Are you a day trader? Are you a scalper? Are you a long-term investor? And you build your plan around exactly that. Then you establish your own trading rules and methods. For example, I have scores of them and I stick to them religiously because I know if I deviate off that track, I'll get smacked and I don't like doing that. So I've built these rules over 33, 34 years and I refine them over time and I stick to them religiously. And then tailor your trading strategy to your individual needs and goals. For example, like we discussed before with the TFSA up in Canada, by the way, shout out to Canada, got my Canada mug today. Um, but that is key. Do you want to grow fast? Are you behind? Are you 28 years of age, you want to retire at 35 or 40 and then you'll travel the world? Or are you 55 and you have nothing saved? You got 10 years of work left to build a strong bag to retire on? All of those things need to be taken into account and then you need to plan accordingly around those. And these are very disruptive times. In the next eight to 10 years will be magical if you're in the right assets. No ifs, ands, or buts. And that's why I make these videos every day. So again, that's what I mean by rhythm. It's multifaceted and uh, make sure you dial it in because you will be infinitely more successful. When you go to the markets with no plan and your random process, etc., you will get schooled, okay? Because remember, the other side of the trade is somebody like me. And you don't want to be going against me uh, 80 to 90% of the time because I don't like to lose more than 20% of the time. Okay? Very important. <laughs> hope that helps. I feel like I'm like a school teacher today. But these are things that, you know, important people. Important things to know. Next uh, is from Tigo John. For energy stock trading, how could we use IA tools in conjunction with a matrix similar to the Bitcoin miners to trade energy stocks? By the way, I'm overdue for a miner video. It's coming next week. Travel and electricity interruptions last week made it very, or this week made it very difficult, but that will be coming. But uh, energy trading stocks, we have a different tool for that. And let me show you. 
a little bit about how it works. And this is a very misunderstood model that few get because it's it's three dimensional. And let me let me try to explain it real quick. So we have this thing called the macro model. Literally, <laughs> I think we I think three people have bought it, but it's designed for people that understand macro, that understand commodity markets, and understand proxies of commodity markets. So let me try break that down. Uh, the model, macro model, utilizes uh, nearly 20 different indicators to create a composite score on the relative strength or weakness of the global macro environment. If you see in the middle there, it's kind of a bit of an eye chart, but that is the macro strength, and it's spiked based on the recent GDP numbers. Uh, and that is kind of crazy. Much of the world is actually rebounding, which is very, very bizarre. But then you can pull any type of asset into this, uh, any type of thing like uh, commodity prices, copper prices, interest rates, money supply, the price of oil, etc. And then you can compare that model, the benchmark, to an actual asset. So at the very bottom here, well, the top is Occidental Petroleum. The middle part is basically the macro strength. And then you're comparing Occidental to the price of oil at the bottom. And this model will tell you when to buy Oxy and when to sell it. It's real simple. Uh, and it, it also tells you, uh, understand the strength and the state of the macro environment. So you can make directional trades. So for example, here in this case, the price of a commodity, which is oil in this example, comparing that to the price of a stock, that depends on the commodity oil, and then it'll tell you when to get in and when to get out based on those multiple factors, i.e. the strength of the economy, which determines the demand for oil and whether or not the oil stock is hot. So when you are green, you typically get into the stock. When it goes red at the bottom, you get into the commodity oil. And that's simply how it works. So it's like a, it's a pair trading model tied to macro that nobody gets. But if you want to trade energy and energy proxies, this is the way to go. It sounds like you know exactly what you're doing. And favorite, favorite, favorite part of the weekend, thank you so much to the team that puts this together. Today, today, the, today we donated to Rockfish Wildlife Sanctuary and they help a whole bunch of very cute animals. We got Davey, uh, <laughs> who are turtles, a uh, little baby turtle. And uh, it's amazing. These things can live to a hundred years or more. Athar, uh, rescued from an animal hoarding situation, and Oxiana found wandering the streets. So they are adorable and gorgeous, and thank you so much. Uh, turtles move slow, but the markets move fast, and they're very, very cute. So thank you so much. And tomorrow, DCA, October 30th, which is Monday. It's going to be on my channel, 7.30 a.m. Pacific, 4.30 Central European time, with Ivan and CTO Larson. <clears throat> And these guys, I think uh, Ivan might wear his uh, little snuggle uniform again as well, because things are crazy bullish. A lot of good stuff is happening this week as well, coming up also through the next few days. So thank you all for coming. I'm going to take a couple of questions now. Thank you to the mods in the chat and making this happen. Rusty Bot out there in Norway. Uh, is it still on me? Get off, get off, get off. <laughs> Not sure what that means, but sometimes I... My brain is too frazzled after doing what I do here that I can't get the jokes. And thank you so much, uh, long-term holder. Appreciate you so much. And Kamikars Creations, very impressed with what you said in the community there this week. Really impressed. Keep up the great work with your three-legged stool. And Rancid Crypto, um, when Bitcoin hits my target price of 100000 I'm thinking about selling half of a Bitcoin to purchase some river property in Florida. This will pay for the land outright so I can build my retirement home in the future. Any thoughts? Well, this is interesting because a friend of mine sent me a link to a video and it's this beautiful 5,000 square foot, 500 square meter villa in Italy near the Adelphi coast, I think it was. And oh my God, this place is beautiful. It's on 20 acres, massive lot, walled olive gardens and fig trees and all sorts of stuff. Three-story building with an underground. And, oh, it'd be great to have. But I was thinking, okay, the cost of this thing is about $400,000. Literally, 
if it was if it was in Florida, it would be worth ten million probably. But there, it's only worth four hundred thousand dollars. And I was thinking to myself, wow, wow, this you could probably buy for four Bitcoin. That was a conversation I was having with Sanjay. I says four Bitcoin will buy this actual property here. Uh, so I like the way you're thinking. You built your bag in the bear. As I started with this off with the 15,500 Bitcoin, you make 500%, take it off the table or take some off the table, always very prudent, and stick it in something that will be safe. That's always part of my three-legged strategy. Did that in the 90s, made money trading, stuck it in real estate, made money trading, stuck it in real estate, made money trading, stuck it in real estate. Brilliant plan, brilliant idea. And I'm surprised for 50 grand, you can buy a riverfront property in Florida. That sounds cool. So yeah, go for it and be disciplined. And uh, one word of advice though, be prepared to get out at 89K just in case it doesn't go to 100K um, and lock in that property. Next question, uh, Bill Wemmers, I'm finished the Tesla book. Tesla up next week. Yeah, Tesla is deeply oversold, deeply oversold. The RSI is insanely oversold. And we're going into the season where it's called window dressing where asset managers get rid of the crap on their books and they like to start the year with good assets. So yeah, at this level at 207 or under 210, it's ridiculous. Um, I'm fully deployed, so I wish I had more cash, but uh, or else I'd be jumping in the pool with you. But maybe uh, at the beginning of the month, we can get a little bit more. And P. Vincent, uh, where would one go for low fees when buying DCA 50 to $100 over five cryptos? I currently use Coinbase. Yeah, Coinbase will screw you. Um, what you can do is get the, I think they keep, the, it used to be called Pro and then it was called something else. And now it's like the equivalent of an active trader. Have a look at that. It might be worth, well, the problem is DCA 50 to $100. Um, I don't know, but even if fees are high, try find the one that's best. I use the active trader platform on Coinbase so I can buy, you know, a big chunk of something and the fees are literally negligible and watch the spread time your trade. So instead of worrying about fees, if you time your buy really clever, like some things, things fluctuate so fast in crypto. It could be the difference between buying something at say ten dollars and fifty cents versus ten dollars and twenty cents, and if you're buying a, a certain amount, it can actually be quite substantial. So time your trade very carefully; that can save you actually a lot more money than fees any day as well. But uh, that's an interesting question. I used to analyze all of the top crypto exchanges across risk and fees and everything else. I haven't done that in years, but it's probably a good time to revisit. But I know that certain ones are expensive. And that can be a real problem. Also, even the spreads on things like DEXs are terrible, <laughs> similar to what we just discussed too. But P. Vincent, let me dig into that and see if I can find a good global option. I know Binance was great for a while. Uh, they had Bitcoin free trading uh, with very good spreads too. Um, and uh, also, this sounds really, really weird, but <laughs> there's a place called Robinhood. It's, it's free. And their spreads are incredible. I've compared Robinhood to Coinbase, and Robinhood is really good too. And now they have a wallet, so you can take your stuff off immediately as well. So think about that too. I forgot to mention Robinhood. It's, uh, and the good thing about Robinhood too is you can pair trade between assets. That's why I use it, like MicroStrategy, Bitcoin, and stuff real quick and efficiently. Courage the Cowardly Dog. How to deal with DCA out, i.e. taking profits in this bull run and not losing our bags until expected prices as in your retire on series videos. So DCA out is called the Lila model, layer in, layer out model. We'll add it here afterwards. That's designed to identify layers of scalping to when you buy in and also how to take profit. And in the community, I've shared my profit taking model as well, along with hundreds of other models. But that profit taking model is uh, real simple. Again, you could dial it into whatever you want. If you want to take I typically like taking things in fifths, like 20% layers, but you sell either 20% of your bag or 20% of your position originally to get out of it as well. And you can see that even layering out in fifths as an asset increases, you leave very little on the table, which is spectacular. And thank you as well for your super sticker, Zeno, Bottle Red, Sir Winston, Pancake Panda, 
Mr. Weston, <laughs> Dog One, Sigma 103, Forrest M, Iron K, and P. Dot. I appreciate you all. Thank you for coming. And let me see. How long have I even been going? I don't even know. 40 minutes. Try to keep it to 40 minutes. And 2,300 people watching live. Thank you so much for the support. Hit the like. And by the way, I, I, I learned something new about uh, YouTube as well recently. When you hit the like, if you like this content, it helps you find similar good content too. Because most of the content out there is complete garbage. But uh, that's another reason to hit the like too. <laughs> no, uh, and I hate asking for anything. But thank you all for coming, everybody. See you all tomorrow on DCA Live. And uh, hope all as well. Have a good afternoon. Have a good weekend. I hope you had a great weekend. Bye.